University of Tennessee has a lot of skeletons in its closet. Animal bones, that is. It's a valuable tool for the anthropology department. Leslie Ackerson gives us a closer look. Alligators, frogs, and fish, oh my. We have over 12,000 vertebrate specimens in our collection, so that's 12,000 skeletons of individual animals. Inside the University of Tennessee's anthropology department is one of the largest vertebrate osteology collections of its kind in the U.S. Animals with antlers and horns up here just because their antlers take up so much space. And the animal bones that fill these shelves feature the tiniest of creatures we have a pretty good collection of bats to the largest. We have some bison in our collection. How heavy is that? Oh, um, 15 pounds maybe. As assistant professor Annika Janssen shows us, some skulls are tough to recognize, like this dolphin. Others, it's a dead ringer. In case where the skull looks exactly like <laughs> what we expect. This graveyard of knowledge is an incredible resource for traveling researchers and students. You know, beyond just being able to identify bones and identify different species based on tiny bone fragments, I think students have a much greater appreciation for, you know, the diversity of animal life out there. While there are a few exotic skeletons, we do have uh, an ostrich, for example, from the Knoxville Zoo. Most are native to the state, like critters you'd spot in your backyard or catch in the Tennessee River. It's a gar. Since its creation in the 1970s, every fragment is labeled and stored. What county, who was the collector, what condition was it found in? A nice example, like dead in yard. <laughs> so the collection was started a few decades ago by Paul Parmalee. He would go out fishing and uh, <laughs> donate all of the fish skeletons to the collection. Walter Klippel also did a lot of collecting. We also have hunters who have donated some deer that they've hunted. Some people have picked up roadkill for us and donated them. Though note, they are not taking any fresh additions at this time. Folks who have been doing zooarchaeology and they say, oh, my spouse says, no, you can't keep these animal skeletons, <laughs> you know, their own personal collection in the garage anymore. So they've donated that material to us, which we gladly accept. And they are always happy to help answer questions about your own discoveries. No bones about it. We get a lot of emails from people with pictures of bones wondering what kind of animal it is. For Live at 5 at 4, I'm Leslie Ackerson. And you can follow the program on Instagram as well as Facebook. They will let you know about different family-friendly events where you can see the animal bones up close, like the McClung Center's Darwin Day and Dig It Days throughout the year.